David Pakman at the National Conference for Media Reform in Denver, Colorado, here with my neighbor, Josh Levy, Internet Campaign Director at Free Press. Talk to us about, there's so many great panels with Internet-related stuff happening here. What are some of the top ones? So, we have different tracks for this conference. You know, we have tracks, so-called tracks, that are focusing on media ownership and the future of journalism and uh, media diversity. So. We also have a track for internet freedom. And internet freedom crosses a lot of lines. Internet freedom is about access to high-speed open broadband networks. It's about uh, freedom from online spying and surveillance. It's about uh, many other things that affect people here in the US and things that affect people all around the world. So what we've tried to do with this track is to reflect the needs and concerns of internet users everywhere. So for example, uh, you have people here in the US who are focused on net neutrality, on, on getting, making sure that the internet that we do have access to is open, that we can communicate in the way that we want to without fear of corporations or anyone else censoring what we do and say. Uh, strangely enough, that's a concern for people in Europe, in Africa, in Asia, and everywhere else around the world. Um, so we have a panel called the web, Building the Web We Want, which is focused on the struggles around the world uh, of internet users to get access to the internet, uh, make sure that that access is fast and affordable, uh, make sure that that access is open, and then also to talk about what are internet users, for example, in North Africa and in the Middle East, facing uh, when it comes to government censoring what they do, uh, spying on them, and actually using their online behavior against them when they're engaging in political protest. So uh, that's going to promise to be a really, really interesting panel. Absolutely. Uh, and it reflects a broader mission that we have here at the conference to bring international concerns uh, when it comes to the media or to the internet more broadly uh, to this domestic conversation. Because really, when we're talking about the internet, it crosses all borders. Uh, it's not a US-based thing or a North American thing. It's a global thing. So we need to start talking about it in those kinds of terms. The privacy discussions, to me, are fascinating, and especially because we get a thousand to two thousand comments a day on my show and the few that aren't just anti-semitic comments about me personally <laughs> have a lot of interesting things to say about privacy and there seem to be two kind of major camps people are in one of them is we just should not be uh, uh, surveyed in any way by the government period that's it and the other is if you're not doing anything wrong, why do you care? Only people doing something, quote, wrong should really be concerned. I have, I have qualms with both of those arguments, but when you have kind of, you can have these very uh, d divergent viewpoints, how do you start to really have a reasonable you know, th thought process about, well, privacy? What, what are the extent, what, what's the goal here? Right. So privacy is a fascinating question because, as you say, many people have this opinion that if, if they're not doing anything wrong, then it doesn't matter if they can, they're being spied on. Sure. At the same time, privacy often comes up as the number one concern of internet users. And internet users who are new to the web and internet users who have been using the web since the start. So uh, what I think that means is that people are fundamentally a little creeped out by the idea that even if they're not doing anything wrong, that somebody's kind of watching everything they're doing. And when you tell them that, hey, when you're using Facebook, but not only Facebook, when you're using all kinds of other websites as well, there are these companies that you've never heard of that have names that will not ring a bell, that are tracking a profile of you uh, so that they know everywhere where you're going, not only on Facebook, but everywhere else. And then they're selling that profile to other companies and making a whole lot of money on it. So to so, play devil's advocate with that. I'm going to get ads that are really targeted to my actual interests. I'm not going to see ads for stuff I don't care about. Isn't that a good thing? That might be a good thing for you, and if you're okay with that, then you should have the freedom to be served those ads. But what we don't have is choice mm. in the matter, and we don't have the ability to opt out of that scheme. Right. So Because we don't even necessarily know that it's happening. Right. So at the very least, I think what we need is more transparency about which data is being collected about us and what's being done with that data. Should it be as explicit as when you're on a website, something pops up and says, this website can track the following things. This, that's, that's how this website is structured. Would something like that be sufficient? There are tools that will do that for you. I'm not so sure that we should start telling every website owner that they need to provide that kind of information. Right. That would be a kind you of You get an into a lot of other, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's interesting in the UK, you may have noticed this, when you go to a UK based website, you will often see a pop-up that will tell you that this site uses cookies 
and you have to opt in to the cookie collecting scheme. Mm. Um, again, I, I'm not going to come out in favor or for that method or not. Uh, but it's interesting I, but to know what's is, being done. It's interesting yeah. to see what's being done. Europe in general has tighter uh, privacy standards than we do here in the U.S. But the, here, here's the other side of the privacy yeah. coin, is that it's not just companies. You have government surveillance schemes that, again, we, we hardly are aware of. Right. And we've talked about the lists of words and phrases that can be flagged for further investigation, many of which seem very benign and completely just monotonous everyday words. And I think that is, to the people I hear from, they're more concerned with that than the companies trying to market to them more specifically. That's in my anecdotal experience. Well, right, because that can quickly lead to things like, why am I on a do not fly list? Absolutely. Um, why are suddenly uh, 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 people coming to my door that I've never <laughs> met before, you know? Those, those things happen. Why am I being served with a national security letter telling me uh, that I can't actually speak about the fact that I just received this letter? Those things happen. And actually, our friends at the Electronic Frontier Foundation just won a major case uh, which challenged the constitutionality of those national security letters. And so they're doing fantastic work. They are. All right, we've been speaking with Josh Levy. There's so much more to talk about on this issue, and a lot of it will be discussed at the panels. We are at the National Conference for Media Reform in Denver, Colorado.